Hello, hello. Happy Thursday, my friends. Boy, has it been a week. Boy, I'm ready for this week to be over. Uh, hopefully with all good things because it's been a stressful week this week. Um, so anyway, I am happy to be back with another Thursday throwdown. Last week's Thursday throwdown was very popular and I'm actually using a similar color. Well, no, I'm using one of the colors we used last week. Everybody really liked the color scheme last time. But um, what I'm doing today is I'm playing with something that I've had for quite some time, actually, probably since the new annual catalog came out last year in May. <laughs> so I'm trying to use up those things that I haven't touched. You guys do that? You order stuff and then you just let it sit there. So yeah, we're going to use that stuff. So I'm going to show you the dies that I had to have like right out of the gate and I have not touched them. And then we're going to pair it with some of my favorite paper, which um, is actually as of today, a celebration reward. So Stampin' Up! just announced today that there's some new celebration items in the online store. So um, we have, I can't remember all the things. Some of them are things that, I think most of them actually, I looked at them really quick this morning. Um, but most of them are, are like things that already exist and they're just now offering them as a freebie item in addition to the new celebration items that were in the celebration brochure. So I'm gonna play with the eclectic, delightfully eclectic paper, which is from our annual catalog, and as I mentioned, is now free with a $50 order. And I'm still doing my mystery box uh, promotion for my stamp anniversary, which was my 18th stamp anniversary last week. Um, so until tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow at the end of the day will be the end of that. But if you use the host code, you have to use the host code to get the mystery box. But if you use the host code, I will send you a box of goodies equal to the value of your order before tax and shipping. So you can get freebies from Celebration and Stampin' Up! And then you get freebies from me too. So it's a win-win, right? So let's go ahead and turn this around and I'll show you what we're going to play with. Uh, let me figure out how to do this. Here we go. And just my, don't mind my mess. Oh, why is this not? What did I do? It's not moving. Hold on. I don't know what happened. They always do this. Does it have to go? Hold on, sorry, I'm making you guys sick. I don't understand. Oh, I see, cause that, hold on. I'm gonna have to turn you for a minute. Don't look at the camera. My, somehow or other, there we go. Somehow or my other, my um, camera thing got out of whack and the little like spot on my tool here that allows me to swirl up was facing the bottom so it wasn't working all right sorry about that hope you guys are still with me that was a little rocky uh let me just kind of zoom in a little bit there we go okay i don't know how that happened anyway we're here hello everybody thanks for joining me sorry about that that was a new one i don't know what happened so like there's like a little um like notch in my arm for my camera that actually allows the camera to flip up and for some reason that was facing down so it wasn't allowing me to do that. Anyway, so these are the, hey Susan, hey Cheryl, hey Deb, hey Jen, hey Linda. All right, so Jen, I'm gonna see you next week. That's exciting. All right, so um, this is the dies, the set of dies that I bought like a year ago and have not touched. So, aren't they cute? They're like the patchwork stuff. I feel like this would be really cool. Obviously, it's kind of designed for card making, but I feel like you could do this on a um, scrapbook page, too. So, this is what happens when you die cut it. So, that's one. And I die cut two sets of the patchwork stuff. Um, one of them is starting to fall apart here. Out of two different patterns, using the eclect uh, delightfully eclectic... Now, see, this is going to become a puzzle piece for me to figure out. <laughs> me and my puzzles, right? Um, which one is this? Anyway, we'll figure it out. There's those and these. This was at the top here, I think. Anyway, so those are the two patterns I have. It's nice when they stick together so that I can tell what they are. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this goes like that. Okay. Okay. We'll get there. Um, so, 
No. I don't know. Anyway, I cut out two using the delightfully eclectic paper. This is going to take me longer than I thought. I thought it was going to be easy. But this is the paper from the annual catalog that um, it's like a massive pack of paper. You get like 30 sheets. And I, the reason why I love it is because it's so much variety in the type of paper. It's all 12 by 12. These pieces just happen to be cut to 6 by 6 from my paper share last year. Um, so you can see like there's some great journaling pieces. There's great, you know, flower pieces, ledger pieces, just fun, fun patterns. I love the colors. Very springy, very, very vibrant. And like I said, it's 30 pieces of paper in the card pack. And now for celebration, you can actually get this pack of paper for free with an order of at least $50. And of course there's other newbies, new additions to the celebration rewards as well. Um, so you can actually pick and choose from any of the items, but we've just released a few more of the new items. So, um, uh, let's see. So, all right. So what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to pair this paper. I'm really going to let the paper shine. I think if I can figure out how to get it on the sheet correctly. Um, but then I just pulled a few of my like sentiments that have nice big sentiments. Cause I'm going to let really at the paper be the focus of this and then we're going to attach it to this paper um in like in every other sort of way so i'm going to kind of layer these together so that and what's cool about this is now i can use the other half of the paper for um, another card using the same thing. Now I cut the, this white piece at three and three quarters by four and a quarter, I believe. I just measured the actual shape of the dies. Um, and then I cut the piece of paper that size. I'm probably going to have to trim off a little bit because it's a little bit bigger than what I actually need. But um, I just wanted to have something to tape all the pieces to. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out how these go first. Um, I think it's going to be one of those things where I'm going to have to match them up this way because I can't figure it out otherwise. Let's see. That one might be one we already used. This one, because I don't want to flip it because that's not, oh, that goes up there. Okay. See, all my puzzle work has come in handy, my friends. I've been doing lots of puzzles. Maybe. I need this one. Where's that one? You guys are probably like, it's right there. I'm actually a little slow in puzzles, if I'm honest. I need this one. It's not that one. How did I lose pieces? There's still some over here. No. Oh, good lord. This goes here, right? See, but it should... I cut it this way, so it should go... Not like that. It should be the other way, but whatever. I don't know why that's not working. Because I want it to be all the flowers. And that's the way I cut it. Oh, that that can go up there, too. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize this was going to be such a challenge. Because I want it to be every other. Well, we know this one's here. Okay like that and then this one will be here like that and then um, we need this one. Oh, right there okay why was that so hard you guys are like it was right there oh my goodness my brain is not firing in all cylinders so yesterday I started having well it's been like this probably since I had the cavity filled like a couple months ago, but the last 24 hours, my tooth has been um, horrendous. I was up like every two hours last night with extreme tooth pain. And so they were able to, um, they were able to hopefully fix the issue, although it could possibly be an abscess, which I'm really hoping it's not. Um, but they think it was just because my cavity, when they filled it last November or whenever it was, October, November, um, that they put the cavity too close to the gum line or something. And that was really hard, my friends. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? I won't do the other one. I was going to thinking, um, 
I was kind of thinking I'd do both versions, but I don't think I have time because I can't figure that out. But anyway, so they, um, they filed down my teeth today and it's feeling much better, but like I just had a crappy night of sleep and, um, yeah, you know, tooth stuff. I feel like the tooth stuff is like one of the worst things, right? It's just horrible. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. Oh, this is empty. So we'll get rid of that. Um, I have new stuff. I finally got my stuff. Okay, so um, let's get my Stampin' Up stuff, the good stuff. So I made Nate's card a couple of weeks ago with that cheapo stuff that I got at the craft store. And um, we were, I don't know if I told you guys this story last week, but I had his card put up on the island in the kitchen. And I came around the corner and the front of the card, the one with the car, like the classic, that said you're a classic and it had the little car um, on it. <laughs> the whole thing, the whole panel had fallen off and was on my counter. And I'm like, whose shoddy work is this? <laughs> but it was because I used crappy adhesive. Like I know sometimes adhesive can be expensive, but it makes a huge difference if you buy the crappy stuff versus good stuff. So it's one of those things where you hate to spend the money on it, but you don't want to skimp because otherwise your projects aren't going to last the way you want. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and tape this. And like I said, I'm just going to pair it with a nice big sentiment stamp. So I'm going to get these nice and close. I like the lighter um, paper because then you can see the stitching a little bit better. But I just love this flower paper. I think it's so pretty. So what I might do, we'll see how we do on time because I do have a crap ton of stuff to do still. I'm like so, so today's my February or my January 1st. And I'm already behind you guys. Like how does that happen? Um, so I've got a ton of stuff to get caught up on. So depending on how much time I have, I may show you the other pattern too. So there was two patterns of dyes in here. And um, I think it's really cool because once you get the hang of putting them together, right, um, you can make some really fast cards. Like just die cut a bunch of the pieces and you can mix and match to your heart's content. I feel like this would be a really good thing to do with your um, scraps too. So like if you have just a little bit of piece um, paper left, you could kind of cut a bunch of these little pinwheels or the other one that I'm going to show you and then you can have a variety of pieces to make cards and projects or elements on a scrapbook page what have you and of course you wouldn't have to vary the paper you could just leave them all the same too but I like the alternating pattern look okay yeah I know it's hard but sometimes the adhesive. I think there's certain places where you can kind of skimp a little bit too. Like I do find that I can use a little bit cheaper adhesive sometimes in my albums because you're going to have them on pages with stuff on top of it and then you have um, the pr page protectors and the books to kind of hold stuff in place. But for cards, especially when you're using the um, like all the layers and the embossing folders particularly. So if you guys remember the card that I did for Nate, that card actually had a textured front and the texture particularly makes it really hard. It just, it want the tape, unless it's really good quality tape, it just wants to fall off. So um, yeah, you gotta pick and choose your battles, right? Sometimes you just want the pretty stuff. Like I said, it's never fun to buy the stuff you, oh, this is not fitting all the way on there. Um, it's never fun to buy like the cardstock and the um, adhesives and that kind of stuff. We always want to buy the fun stuff. I get it. I totally get it. All right, so now you can see. So there's our little patchwork. I'm going to clean up the edges a little bit. So see how um, there's like edging on the sides there. So I'm going to just take my trimmer and trim those off so it's a nice even edge. Okay. And then, like I said, we're going to just use... Um, this one's pretty clean, but I'll trim off a little bit. There we go. You want to make sure you get that fuzz out of your paper trimmer too. Okay. All right. So now I have this piece and we're going to use that as kind of like the focal point on the card. Okay. I'm going to use my bone folder. I'm using thick whisper white or thick basic white cardstock. Gonna give that a good crease. I cut it the tall way. 
So this is kind of busy, and actually, because this is smaller, um, I think what I'm going to do is, I have a couple of these too, so let's, um, yeah, let's use these two. I'm going to do the same card twice. Um, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to use an embossing folder, so let's see what I've got for those. Um, pull this over so you guys can help me decide. So I have all my embossing folders here in... Oh, we could use this new one. This is one of the, the celebration ones too. I think that will be really pretty. Let's use that one. Um, this is one of the $100 reward items. It comes with a coordinating stamp set too. But I'm just going to use the embossing folder because I think it's really pretty. So I'm going to actually go ahead and I'm going to do two of these. I'm going to do two of these panels. And I am doing white on white. I know some of you don't really like that, but I like this because... It's a kind of busy card with all the pattern, so um, it's just a good way to have a little texture, but not adding a lot more uh, busyness to it. All right, so I'm going to do this. Actually, I'm doing an embossing folder, so we're going to take that off, put this on, and do the number four. So the 3D embossing folders, which many of Stampin' Up's embossing folders are 3D. You just need the base plate and the gray um, top piece there. Where did I put the other one? I'm going to do two of them. There it is. Sorry. I just whacked the camera. Let me do two while I'm at it. Get that out of the way. I'll use that on the second one too because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do the two cards for you. Alright, so... Uh, let me get that out of the way. Move this. My poor little stamp and cut and emboss. It's having, it's got a bead on. I think I need to get a new one. But again, that's never the stuff I want to spend my money on, right? But I do need a new one. I think I've kind of beat that one up. All right, so now I'm going to put that there. And then I think I'm going to kind of put this on sort of like an angle like that. Let's just commit, you guys. Um, I feel like now those two patterns were a little busy together, but whatever, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Tape that down. And I mean these two patterns, not this pattern. I think that's fine. All right, I think I'm going to do this. But before I tape that, because I'm probably going to dimensionalize that, um, I may put some um, texture, I may, uh, some ribbon on that. So I kind of want... I think I kind of want just a simple, hmm, maybe let's eat cake. That would be good. And then do I want to do the hexagon and add another shape in here, or do I want to just do a circle, like in the middle? I might just do a circle. We'll do let's eat cake. I always love to eat cake. Cake is one of my favorite, but it's not really good for me. All right. It would be my favorite food group, though. Let's see. Do I have any scrap pieces of white over here? There we go. Yeah, we'll just do black ink because it's here. Yay, Michelle, I'm going to see you, too. Excited. I know I got to work on my class this weekend, so got any requests for cards this weekend? Oh, actually, I need to get my Valentine card, my Valentine set back so we can maybe do a Valentine card. All right. Let's eat cake. And I could put this on Fresh Freesia cardstock. But, oh, and actually, I just noticed it's not Fresh Freesia. It's Bubble Bath. Hold on, I have that paper, too. So, yeah, it's Bubble Bath, actually. So I could stamp it in that, but let's just see. I'm going to grab the um, hexagon punch first. And we'll see what we think with this shape. I love this this punch. It's like one of my favorites. This would be great for journaling too, this punch. Like if you're doing scrapbooking pages. Oh, I kind of like that. Do we make that straight or do we kind of put that crooked too? What do you think? But I think I am going to do a little bit of some twine or something. Let's see what I got. Um, oh, I have a little bit of the brown. I could do white, but I think I'm going to do the brown just for a little contrast. 
All right. So I'm gonna just wrap this around here a couple times in the middle. Whoa, don't fall over. I had to change my um, tool bin. It's getting a little too um, too full, and it's got so much random stuff in it. So time to fix it up. I'm gonna tie this in a knot first. a little bow here on the side like that there we go all right and then whoops it's twisting a little bit there perfect now we can put this on I'm gonna put that on with some dimensionals I think I'll do that and then put that kind of straight like that I think that'll be good, but let's just, for fun, let's see if we like it better with the bubble bath. And I'm gonna do, let's do a circle instead and see what we think. Um, what size? Probably a two inch maybe. I love my punches. Yeah, that looks good. See, I don't know what it is. I sometimes don't like sentiments on colored cardstock. I don't know what that is. I think it's a me thing, but I don't know. I think I like the white. What do you guys think? Do we like the white? I think it likes makes the paper stand out a little bit better. Yeah, I think I like that one. I'm not even, you guys like the pink. Maybe blend the edge. I, I thought about that, Sunny, because um, it is a little bit plain there. Let me grab my dimensionals. I also got more dimensionals in stock. Woohoo! That gives me heart palpitations when I don't have dimensionals. I was getting really low, even on the skinny ones. Um, we could do, let's try and do, oh, you know what? I think I just got rid of all my um, sponge daubers in a cleaning frenzy, but I'll use my, I'll use my blending brush. Let's just see. Let's do a little bit of crumb cake around the edges here. You guys all like the pink? Oh, I really like the white. Let's do this. Maybe that will make us happy. We'll compromise, okay? All right, so I'm gonna just add a little bit of crumb cake to the edge of this, do a little distressing. Let's see. See if they like that. Yeah, see, we kinda need our wanted to more like this but now I don't like it you guys like the pink huh all right well maybe I will compromise and we'll do the pink with the hexagon because I kind of like the hexagon yeah I'm not loving that now either I still like the plain white I think more but let's do this we'll compromise I'll do the pink cuz majority rules and I'm gonna, but I'm going to switch it to the hexagon, I think. Okay. And maybe for the next one, we'll do white. Because, yeah. There. So we'll do that. You guys like that one? Let me attach this while you guys weigh in. Pink on the white, you think? Could be. Yeah, because the, I mean, I pulled the brown from this, but maybe pink would be better. I tend to not blend with colors like that, but I don't know why. There's no reason why not to. All right, I guess we'll do this. Let's pop this down. I can try the pink. Let me just uh, put this down. Like that. Um, where's my white? So we'll do this one more time. Like this. Like this. And then we'll take bubble bath. Do I have a pink blender? I do. I'll grab my pink blendy. Pink purple. 
and we'll do this way because I didn't like it the other way. Pink is a little subtler, so that might be better. There we go. Okay, let's see. Definitely gems as an accent. You gotta always add bling at the end. Okay, I can get on board with that one. I kind of like that. What do we think of that one? Does that work? It's kind of a good compromise between the white and the pink. I don't know why. I just don't... I don't know why. I just don't love sentiments on a colored cardstock, except for in certain circumstances. And this... I don't know. I kind of like this one. You guys like that one? Um, I'm going to put that one aside for a second. Uh, look for some bling to go with it. Well, you guys decide. Much better, yeah. I think that looks good. A good suggestion, Deb. All right, let me see what I got for bling here. Um, I could use the silver. Those are nice. I need some more bling. What the heck's up with that? Um, I have festive pearls. The gold could be pretty. What do you think? Gold? Or... My other thought is we could do the, these are pretty too, the iridescent pearls. Or we could do those silver sparkles. What do we think? Silver, white, or gold? It would be these golds, these white, or these silver. Pearls, the white one, beautiful. Okay, we're, we're in agreement on this, so I'm going to go ahead and attach that while you vote on this. This is the choose your own adventure type of stamping. It also allows me to not have to make decisions. Whoop, that didn't work. Oh, good Lord. I'm telling you, decisions are not my thing. I was the youngest of three by a lot, actually. My older sister is six years older than me. My brother is nine years older than me. So I always say that I never was able to make decisions. So now when somebody asks me to make a decision, I get like deer in a headlights. So um, it's better when you guys make the decisions. White, white, pearls, pearls. All right, you guys are making it easy for me. Pearls, unanimously. And you know what? That would have been my pick, too, because I love a nice, elegant-looking card, and I think that will work. All right, so now, question. I think I'm actually going to do something a little bit different with the pearls, because I feel like if you put them in here, they're probably going to get a little lost, because there's so much paper and pattern. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool, and I'm going to put them. I'm going to put one right in the middle there. And then this is a little trick I like to use, and then I'm going to put... One on the side, and one on the side like that. Kind of like a little line like that. What do we think? You like that one? All right, so there's that. I actually have the same supplies cut again, and this time we'll do it as um, it was easy to line up. Yeah, I like that. I always start with the one in the middle. It makes it a little bit easier. All right, so I'm going to fold this again. We have our embossed piece already from before, so I'm going to go ahead and attach that down. And I also have my little piece. Another thing to know, too, you'll see I used quite a bit of adhesive on that one. Because it's textured, you want a little extra adhesive, or dimensionals work great for the top. So the back, I'm going to use a little bit of texture, but just because this panel is going to be a little heavy, so it's going to want to, like, fall off. So, um... A little extra adhesive on the backs and then when you attach stuff to the front my recommendation is actually to use um, Stampin Dimensionals which is what we did on this one just because it will hold better to that textured cardstock than regular adhesive even the good stuff like I use the Stampin Seal Plus because it has such good um, sticking qualities all right so now we have these two which is the other die and now I can bring some with me Jen um, I actually have a list of things I need to order, so I will bring some of those with me because I know those are really awesome. Everybody loves them. All right, so now we've got this guy, and again, I cut this to the same size as the die itself, and I'm going to go ahead and line these up, and <laughs> hopefully this is a little bit easier um, than before. The problem is I uh, just threw them in a pile, so that's going to make it tricky. Oh, but see, that's upside down. Well, I'll, actually, I can do it like this. And then we'll just flip the pattern upside down. That's fine. Uh, let's do then this one. Oh, this is much easier, I think. No, that's not it. It's this one. 
Yeah, we'll have to flip them because the flowers are upside down right now, but that's okay. Then it goes... Nope. Oh my god, why am I so hard? How bad at this? <laughs> this should not be that difficult. Oh my word. Alright, this goes here. I'm telling you. The brain is on a hiatus. This way. This way. There we go. It's the two different patterns that's messing with me. Okay, so this is this one. There we go. All right. So now I can go ahead and tape those onto this piece, right? Uh, let me just get it lined up on here correctly. It goes like this, right? And like this. And like this. And like this. And like this and then once I get these all taped down I'm gonna split this over so that the flowers are not upside down all right so let's start with this one uh, I'm just gonna attach that as close to the edge as I can so I don't run out of space like that then we'll use this Attach this one right up against that one. Okay, like that. Then we'll do this. I should probably be using liquid glue for this because it will get into those little itty bitty corners a little bit better. But I'm trying to be quick. <laughs> That's funny, though, because I'm not being quick today. All right, so there's that one. And then there's this one. It was funny, when we were in New Hampshire and I was doing puzzles, I was we were in, um, we had a couple of different condos because there were so many of us. So Nate's, uh, pretty much all four of the kids came up, some of them with significant, significant others and kids, except for his oldest son. He lives in Florida with his mom. But um, the rest of them came up for at least a little bit. And um, Mackenzie, his oldest, loves puzzles. And she has hundreds and hundreds of finished puzzles that are all glued and down in her basement on the walls and stuff. And her daughter, our granddaughter, um, she I was doing a little 300-piece puzzle in our little condo that we had for the weekend, um, which is right next door to everybody else's. And um, she came over, and I was not struggling. I mean, I was doing just fine, but I was trying to put the puzzle together and she was like, you should just tell, you should just call my mom. My mom would do it. She's, she's so good. At, she's so much better. <laughs> okay. Thanks. But I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah. So will I have these guys with me next week? I can. Um, you mean to buy or to borrow? Cause I can bring mine to share if you'd like, or I can get, I have to put in an order for next week. So if you need anything for next week, let me know. Um, all right, so you're not a fan of it. took me a while to get used to the liquid glue, but in some cases, Susan, liquid glue is actually really better. All right, so I'm going to just trim off those edges. Come on, get out of there. Um, apparently, I did not do this one straight, so let me just fix this. There we go. Now i got to get all that gunk out of my trimmer. There we go. All right, so that's cute. Now we flipped it so that the flowers are going the right way. I know what the pattern was probably supposed to go. It would be better that way. I didn't really pay attention, but I'm gonna flip it so that the flowers are not upside down. I probably could have flipped the patterns too, but then the stitching would have been on the wrong side too. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna do the same thing, I think. Let's do, actually this time I'm gonna use the white. Let's use, I know it's white on white, but what did I do with that? There it is. I'm going to use the white linen thread this time. And I think I'm going to tie it so it's kind of up here at the top. So let's do. Come on. Do that. All right, wrap that. 
Put that. Kind of move that up a little bit. Like this. I'm going to need a little liquid glue, I think, for some of these because they're popping up on the ends. <laughs> Alright. Do this. There we go. Okay. So we've got that. Now, for a sentiment, I almost kind of feel like I want it to be almost like a tag coming off that, but I don't know if that would be weird. What if we... Well, yeah, like I could kind of punch a hole in the corner there and use this, but I want to use a different sentiment. What else do I got that will fit in there nicely? Wishing you everything wonderful. Will that fit on there? It's a little tight. This one that's a little smaller. Maybe the Beyond Grateful. That would work, but it's... Well, it's kind of the same size as the cake, so I might have to fill in a little bit, but I think we could do that. So let's do that. And I think we'll probably do similar, except I'm going to stamp it this time, I think, in the navy. Where's my white scrap piece? There it is. I'm going to actually punch it first, because I want a hole in the top there. So I'm going to, where is that? Oh, that's a little tiny hole punch. Where's my regular hole punch? This. So I want to make sure that when I punch it, I'm going to punch it in that corner. I don't want the words to get punched. So if I punch it first, then when I stamp this, it won't get in the way. Ooh, that's fun. I know, isn't it always hard to be able to work with a stamp set that's not your usual style? But it does push you outside of your comfort zone, Sunny, so that's awesome. And I always say to my group, my team, and to anyone really, well, no, I guess to my team because no, not anybody else is selling, but I try to get stamp sets that I can show, like, or even, yeah, I guess even my customers, like, that I can do at least five different things with it, so, like, five different techniques or something, so that, um, so that you know it's versatile and you have lots of options to do with that. So I have some bubble bath ribbon here, so probably should have done it reversed and done the white as the accent but or the piece to tie on to let me see what it looks like oh oh my goodness did i sh i thought i just snipped my sweater ay 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 yeah 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 i think i might switch these but let's just see yeah because this is just basically going to cover the whole thing so let's do this do 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 well we're gonna have to just sacrifice this i'll use that piece and then I'm going to do this. I think this ribbon is actually no longer available. I think it's... This might have been a celebration item last year. I don't even remember. I just know I had it and it's bubble bath, so I'm going to use it. It's in my stash. We all have tons and tons of ribbon, right? So I'm sure you can find something that would work. You could use the yellow, too. All right. Like that. I'm just going to do like a little knot, which that's not the best knot, but it's going to get covered anyway, so I'm not really worried about it. And then we're going to use the twine here to attach it. Oops, I, I um, smudged it. That's all right. I got stuff on my fingers, I think. My navy ink pad is a little uh, inky. Alright, then what I'll do is I'll do this, and I probably want to edge it or something, 
but I'm going to get it attached to this first. And I want it to be kind of on an angle like this, so like that. I'll probably tie a bow as well, but let's just leave it like that for right now. Okay, and then a couple things we got to do before I tape that down. Um, first off, I need to find my sand eraser and see Ow. if I can clean that up a little bit. This is the Tombow sand eraser. Everybody always asks what it is and where I got it. Um, I actually get these from Suling, so those of you that will be at the crop next week, um, she usually has them in her store. Um, or you can order them online, too. But it's really good for, like, dark cards, or white cardstock, or light cardstock, and dark ink stains. Just kind of erases a little bit of the mess. There we go. Okay, so, um... I think we'll do the pink edging again. I liked how that looked, and I still have everything out. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna do this. I probably should've done this before, but you know what? I like a good challenge. Just gonna add a little bit of pink to it. I'm not gonna go crazy with it but it does just add a little bit of something. I'm trying not to get more ink on this because my hands are kind of full of ink. There we go. I did kind of get a little fingerprint, but that's all right, we'll fix it after. Okay, so that's gonna go like that. Then I'm going to actually use some dimensionals to position this the way I want it. So I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back here so it will sit still. You could let it hang and float, but I want it to sit a certain way so that you can read it correctly. If I let it float, it's gonna go in a direction that may or may not be legible. All right, so I'll do that. And then I'm gonna tie this, maybe, come on, in a bow. Like so. Just a little one, so I'm going to make that shrink. Like that. Okay, I'll trim these down. Mm, I think I'm actually going to make them shorter. Whoop. Like that. Okay, then we can put this on again. I'm going to actually slant it this way so the words are um, still left to right-ish. Attach this down. And as always, if you want to get the tutorials for the cards we make for Thursday Throwdown, make sure you're on my email list because I um, send out those tutorials every Tuesday. And um, if you need to join the email list, you can either message me or at the top of this page, if you're on this Facebook page, um, there's a link saying sign up, and that will bring you to my email list. Or if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link in the description of the video. All right, so I am going to use a little bit of um, liquid glue. Do I have one open already? No, apparently not. So that one is going to go in my store, and I'm going to open one because I don't have one. All right, I'm going to actually fix some of these to so see how. Oop, whoa. That came out really fast. So, a little bit will do you with these. They hold really well. And I forgot what it's like to have a brand new one. So, light touch, like very little. Like, you don't need a lot. You don't want it squishing out the sides. And this side over here is kind of popping up. Okay. And then that top piece, too. And then all we have left is to add a little bit of bling. Because no card is complete without bling. My hands are sticky, so it keeps pulling it up after I stick it down. All right. The trick, too, with these, you want to make sure you leave them upside down. So I always put them upside down in my bin. 
All right, now we need a little bit of bling. Where's my pearls? Here they are. Should we do the same? Probably. Uh, let me use this. Am I going to convention? Unfortunately, no. I'm super sad. and I'm having super serious FOMO because um, I didn't realize that when I, I am actually vending at Crop on the Cape here that same weekend. It's a big, big crop. I haven't done it in years and years and years. And I was offered to do it this year. And I said yes. And then I looked at the calendar and realized it was the same weekend as on stage in Houston. So yeah, I'm going to miss out. Unfortunately, I'm super sad. That would have been fun to meet you. All right, so there's our two. Um, there's still some stuff here. So I'm gonna, I keep smudging it, I think. There we go. There. There we go. What do I think? I actually think I kind of like this one better. I don't know. But, yeah, it's pretty. I like them both. Different vibes, but I still think they're pretty cool. I just love these dies. Like I said, these are kind of standalone dies. They're in our annual catalog. They're really fun to play with, um, especially if you've got challenging uh, puzzle issues at the moment. I should be so much better at that, but I don't know. My brain. I'm going to blame it on my brain um, and my lack of sleep. So there you have it. Those are the two cards. Very similar, kind of the same layout, just a little bit of different um, follow-through, a little different... Um, implementation so same pieces there we go oh happy anniversary sunny ah i'm glad you like them yeah they're pretty so like i said i will send you out the in the um tutorials if you're on my email list those will go out on tuesday and you'll get two it'll be a bonus um they'll probably be i don't know that i'll actually write different directions because they're pretty much the same but i'll have pictures of both and then the directions and sizes and measurements and all that for everything so you can recreate them at home if you choose and of course if you would like to take uh, advantage of my stamp anniversary sale so it was 18 years for me last week um, i'm doing the mystery bogo box sale which basically is if you shop in my online store using that host code you have to use the code um you will get um obviously your celebration rewards from Stampin' Up! themselves. And then I will also send you a box of goodies from my retired stash of equal to what you spent before tax and shipping. So you're getting double the cookie, the cookies, the, co the cookies, maybe I have cookies online, the goodies. And then I will um, send you an invoice for just the cost of the shipping of the box, but everything else, unless your order's over a hundred, then I cover that too. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, my watch is now telling me I need to move. So apparently I've been sitting for too long. So I'm going to go sign off and get ready for my job number two today. I hope you guys all have a great day. And again, don't forget to sign up for that email list if you would like to get the tutorials in your inbox on Tuesday. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.